I was curious, like what, what I've been asking people is like, what was the, um, for the pandemic year, like what was the, like sort of the hardest part of that year or year and a half now? What is it, year and a half? Well, the, the hardest part are my personal health challenges. Right. I mean, other than that, no. Yeah. Really? Because, I'm, you know, we're here, we have our environment. It's pretty wonderful. And uh, even better now that we're downstairs, which is a real plus. Right. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's the, the first personal health challenges have been absolutely horrible. Right. Horrible, horrible on many levels. I mean, because there are different ones. And so, you know, many of these were completely unexpected. Right. And it's really awful. Hmm. Awful. I just never thought I'd have to go through this. You know, it was hard enough to go through the uh, congestive heart failure, which was a big surprise. Right. Uh, but then I began to deal with that and uh, got the medication I needed for that. And fine, even though it's kind of horrible because of the dietary restrictions or- Right, the salt and stuff. Yeah, awful. yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's- <laughs> Too many different people are coming and going and doing trying to do this and trying to do that and you know get on a schedule and this and that mm. but you know those are the more recent things the more recent things the right. er earlier things were finding out that i had a particular um uh thing that congestive heart failure that was distressing but you know it was taken care of at the hospital mm. and so that's that's a good thing uh, and then I came home and then that was a fine thing and then oh guess what something else has cropped up you have a tumor mm. uh, well did I know that no right. I did not so then that had to be dealt with in many different ways, like about 10 different tests and you know, several weeks of not knowing what, what the situation really was. Right. Which on Tuesday was when we had the meeting to find out that it was in fact lymphoma and that I was gonna have to have pretty complicated treatments for it over a long period of time. Hmm. And many of those treatments have to take place at the hospital, which is very, very inconvenient for us. Right. You know, uh, the office that we met at on Tuesday, that's not so inconvenient, it's much easier. Um, you know, so that, that presents the problems of transportation. Right. And I'm not strong enough to do much walking, mm -hmm. even with a walker. So I have to build up my strength, but it is not yet built up at all. Nobody has been working with me on that yet. Right. So that's frustrating. And I'm just hoping for some, uh, you know, some help on that level because being dependent on other people to drive me and stuff uh, or help me walk or whatever is, is really a drag, but you know, I'll just have to do it until I don't do, need it anymore. Hmm. Yeah, so that's, that's a situation. Yeah. That's a yeah. I have not done one single artwork since this all began, not one single drawing, not one single anything. My physical coordination has gotten very, what I mean is my hand coordination. I, I have the, the shape a lot yeah. of the time, see that? Yeah. And then when I do try to write or something, it, it doesn't come out 
the way it used to. Right. Yeah. So many levels. And of course, I've been uh, <laughs> accused of or been thought to have early signs of dementia. That's pretty hard to take. Mm -hmm. until Pella intervened and said, no, this is not dementia. This is delirium, very different, has a very different meaning. Right. So, you know, and that got me into all this series of, of recent tests. I mean, a series. I was at the hospital. I didn't come home for about seven days. Right. And yeah. had to have all these different tests and a biopsy and a... MRI, which was one of the worst experiences of my life. Try to avoid it if you ever are told you need an MRI. What's so bad about it? Is it the closed space? It, no, no, it's not close uh, at all. You're yeah. out there lying down. It is so noisy, Joe, with all these horrible sounds that are part of it. Yeah. That I mean, I, I thought I was going to, I don't know. I, the next time, if I ever have to have on them, I say, please give me a sedative. Right. So I can get through this. Yeah. Yeah. So I, who knew? I, I thought an MRI, oh, that's an MRI. It's just another test. Right. Like a CAT scan. Well, right. you know, those things, even the ones you have to go into a tube and all that, not bad, not bad at all. Mm. But MRI, horrible. So, um, but I didn't know, or I would have asked for a sedative. So, uh, what can I say? And then a whole lot of other tests, which were mild and fine, and they were okay. They were okay. Yeah, and of course, people at the hospital are very nice and all of that. Right. But... Only one person can visit at a time. I know, I heard that. That's... And that means for the whole day. The whole day? Ooh. Yes. If Hank comes, he's the only person that can come that day. Right. And he's not supposed to come in and out. They're not supposed to allow. Yeah, he, away, yeah, he tried it once and, and the guy let him come in and out. And yeah. He's gone home to get something so you know that's one of the new rules which is difficult right yeah so one day leon visited but all the other days hank visited and that was it all my other friends forget it right you can't so now, it. now that i'm home they can visit me mm. and that's really nice um i want to get rid of this big thing that says this meeting is being recorded. I guess I will just press continue. I, I don't really want to have this blanking your face. Oh, right. Is that what I do, Joe? Yeah, I think so. I just did that, Hank. Oh, maybe we need a clicker. Uh, it's okay, Hank. It's okay. Let me, let me... Sweetie, let's quit. Let's not, <laughs> please. There. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Um, I would say this whole experience has been very hard on a relationship. Right, of course. I mean, it gets harder and harder. Mm -hmm. So Hank has been um, trying to get more services so that I'm not always relying on him, but quite often I am. Right. So, you know, he's in the position of telling me what to do, and I hate that. Of course. Um, you know, I hate it. So we've had some conflicts around stuff like that. Right. Yeah. We did fine for, for a while, right. fine, but then it started to break down. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, it's hard to. Uh... Yeah, I mean, it's a lot of stress. To put yeah, on. and you know, come, I have to transition from being an independent person to being this little 
thing that gets pushed around. <laughs> right. Not fun. Not, no. not fun. <laughs> no, no. You know, so have I felt like an independent person for a long time? No, I have not. Yeah. Right. How do you um I just cure like how do you um that seems like a really hard transition to make. I don't know if like um for me like it would certainly be um or should I say will at some point. Um yeah, I don't know. Uh, let's hope not joe right. let's hope not yeah i hope not i mean you know that's out of my control in some ways you know to some degree yeah. you know all those pieces um yeah you don't necessarily need to have a life-threatening illness you don't ne necessarily need to right. have yeah. yeah true <laughs> True, true, true. And the um, thing I keep telling people that I have found so interesting is that when we met with the oncologists, finally, or the oncologist, um, she said, well, because these treatments that they are proposing are very complicated, very complicated. Um, she said, when I had lymphoma before, mm -hmm. which was about 13 years ago, Right. There was only one chemo medication available. And that's the one I had. Okay. And I had it through the IV over a period of months. And then I was cured. Hmm. I was told. Right. And I believe it. Um, but now the situation is different because there's about, I don't know, 500 different, um, what do you call them now, types of lymphoma. Oh. And they treat them in all kinds of different bizarre ways, like puncturing your spine and inserting, oh. inserting uh, the, the chemo into, directly into your spine. Well, maybe that will be fine, but it, it, it doesn't sound good. Right. You know, yeah, sounds creepy. Um, <laughs> yeah. I guess the positive part of that is like there, the fact there are more treatments is, you know, the thing about cancer in general seems like compared to a few decades ago, like it's way more treatable, um, which is, that's the positive part. But yeah. Yeah, it would be curious to, to speak with my oncologist from 13 years ago and right. see what her take on all of this is. Yeah. I, she may be retired, but she is around. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that would be, yeah, that would be great to find out. Um, but we'll put it this way. If this were not my kind of help Armageddon this year. Right. It would be a good year. Mm. Because, you know, the way we were set up, the way we had our studio, we had our place, our apartment, we were in, you know, great shape. Right. And we, what, had limited, um, I would say what limited um, mm, limited communication, I guess you know, with with folks. Right. Um, but other than that, you know, what I was able to do a major painting. Right. Yeah. That's true. Yeah, I remember that. I mean, you guys had both you and Henry had, um, yeah, you had limited. So we were doing stuff by FaceTime and Zoom and everything. But I mean, but you guys have 
and notice you guys really had that like you had your art you could do and so you know in some degree of contact with other people because you were what was it feldenkrais or whatever you're doing it yeah yeah right. yeah and you had some and I, well, I had various things on zoom like book group and this i can still have that right but yeah yeah so yeah my book group has been very supportive by bringing food hmm. oh great yeah. yeah so we have not had to cook right Oh, good. Very, very helpful. Yeah. <laughs> what was, um, I'm curious, like, what was the, I mean, on that front, like, what was the sort of best part of the year? <laughs> if such a thing is possible in a pandemic. Oh, I think it is possible. Hmm. Uh, but let me think, let me think. What's the best part of the year? can't really think of it mm -mm. no i know like well i'll say like from our side with amos and then me like um taking the oh, art well, class. Sorry, sorry sorry that was cool taking the class was maybe the brightest part right yeah yep yeah it was wonderful because it wouldn't have like logistically without a pandemic like we wouldn't have been driving down every week to take a class yeah. you know and even with all its limitations of like weird visuals and stuff like that yeah. it was still cool yeah yeah so no sorry i forgot that was a very much of a high point and even you may not have known it but during that period i was not feeling well at all right and some days I would feel like, oh my God, and I would want to kind of nod off during the class. Right. Um, so, it, and sometimes I would think, I just can't do it today. Hmm. Um, but otherwise, it was a really a bright spot <laughs> to see both you and him. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. It was actually very, positive in terms of feeling more in touch with you because mm -hmm. that has been a difficult thing to be in touch with you because you don't do that very well i'm sorry Joe. I don't, yeah i don't love email i don't love email at all the phone is tiresome yeah yeah so True. for me that has been a hard thing to be able to, to not be able to be in touch with you very much. Yeah. Right. That makes sense. Yeah, and that art, yeah, the art class was great that way. Cause I mean, I mean, for me, it was one of the best parts of the year and also teaching Amos was too, even though that was hard. Um, yeah. yeah. But it was one of the best parts. Cause like we, you know, we would do the art and then and then also talk about like whatever we ended up talking about, which was all kinds of stuff. Uh-huh, uh-huh. We'd open up doors and stuff. I yeah. 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 So. Have you been... And that was not my idea. But I'm so glad that I think maybe it might have been Naomi's initial idea oh was it yeah it probably was like i always kind of remembered it as being your i knew it wasn't my idea and i remembered it being yours but now that i think about it yeah she had wanted to do an art class for amos right yeah and i had been yeah that's cool and i like for years like you almost taught my friend kurt once and he flaked and that's Anyway, that's another thing, but like, <laughs> yeah. um, I had thought of taking classes with you for years. So that like the, for me personally, like taking a class with you for years. And so the pandemic like provided that opportunity, mm -hmm. which was cool. Cause I had, you know, years ago when I was still doing landscaping, I, I was like, oh, it'd be nice if I actually sort of knew what I was doing when I, you know, tried to draw pictures of people's yeah. like envisioned yards for them and stuff yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. 
I still don't feel like I've learned. Actually, I learned some. I mean, you know, but anyway. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. <laughs> Do you see um is there a way? Are you is there a way for you to practice like art in any way at the moment? I have to find one. Yeah. And I have that's part of my, you know, getting stronger physically is one and beginning to be able to draw again. You know, when I try to write now, Joe, I, I can't write very well. I have a lot of shakes going on mm -hmm. and um, I can't control my letter forms very well. Right. So I'm really in a different place. And I, what I need is just to practice and have have fun drawing right and that means you know um the thing where you just do circles or circles or you know lines or lines nothing nothing representative but um just to get the hand moving right yeah so that that is my one of my intentions mm -hmm. yeah that makes sense what if what are the hand tremors from like you know what I don't know. Okay. No, I, I, I don't take them seriously. <laughs> they're erratic, they come on. Well, mainly they come on after I've had a bath or something and I've gotten really cold. Oh, uh, okay. And then I really kind of shake and shake and shake. Right. I mean, most of the time I'm, I'm not having that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I know um, okay. that, Tremors are a sign of certain diseases. Right. Well, for example, um, Parkinson's. Right. I thought. I don't that. think. I don't think any of that is going on. No. 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 That's a whole other thing. Yeah. Entirely. Yeah. Oh no! That was that already. That's frustrating. Is your left hand is like. You're well, right I hand. just don't use it. Right. Ever. I never have. Maybe I should do that, you know. Mm -hmm. But no, it's it's my normal, my, my right hand. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm like trying to think of solutions here, but I'm, <laughs> I'm like not going to think of any. <laughs> uh. What was that? Oh. oh. Um, well, you know, it's interesting because at a certain point where I had gone through a certain bunch of treatments for the congestive heart failure, I had been intending to start a big painting mm. and I had bought the materials, you know, the wood, the canvas and so forth. And um, I just hadn't been able to start because I, too many other things. And Leon said to me, he said, you know, I think you would be a lot happier if you had a large painting to work on. Mm. I said, you're so right, Leon. Yeah. And I'm all ready to do it, but I have to build the stretcher. Right. Said, Mom, I will build the stretcher for you so that you can get started. And I, you know, that certain things make me cry, and that makes me cry mm -hmm. that he would be willing to build a stretcher for me, which is no big, I mean, it's no small deal. It's a big, big deal. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, he was prepared to do that. Yeah. How do you build a stretcher? I don't know. Like what's... Well, the kind I was intending has... Well, it's with one by twos. Right. Four sides. Right. A center brace both ways. Yeah. 
corners. I always put on corners, um, plywood corners. Mm -hmm. Keep it in square. Oh, sure. Yeah. And then when all of that is together, then stretching a canvas on it. Mm -hmm. Oh, the other part is putting on quarter round. Oh, uh, okay. Okay. And the quarter round is to raise the canvas right. so that it's not hitting on those other wooden parts. The structure, right? Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. And I mean, the thing is, I make really good stretchers. Most people go out <laughs> and buy canvases. Right. No, I do not. I do not. Because I like mine. I think they're the best. <sighs> That's just how it, I just don't go out and buy them. Right. <laughs> so. I'm, I'm kind of stubborn on that. Right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> makes sense, though. Well, I don't know if it makes sense, but that's how it is. It makes sense to me. I'll put it that way. Like, oh, okay. Yeah. I, you know. I guess so. Yeah. 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 Well, it would be interesting to know, Joe, what kinds of responses you are getting in the interviews. Oh, and these? Sure. Well, I've only done two so far. I'm gonna. Um, I'm gonna interview my sister next. Um, mm -hmm. I would say, yeah, I mean, it was fascinating. It's been fascinating to me. I mean, this just came up, you know, I had thought a lot about coronavirus, COVID and like pandemic and the policies and the condition of the nation and whatever, all this stuff. And um, I wrote a couple of pieces about that. And then I kind of, what happened was I get sort of sick of that and thinking about Corona and everything. And then I just became curious about what other people went through. Mm -hmm. um that's the background and so like for i think i can say this it's okay like for my nephew uh and then these interviews they're both up on youtube anyway so i'm sure <laughs> i can say it they um for my nephew he talked a lot about he's a violinist right so the pandemic just like killed that sector of uh it just killed it like he had a whole that was the end of and it's kind of coming back now, but at the time it really killed it because like the audience for classical music is older. So of yeah. course, older audience had no, and things were shut down anyway, but no interest, you know, for them in coming, sitting in a closed place and breathing air. So um, that kind of killed it. And he had a whole reckoning about that for him. That was a big part of it. And then for my brother, he um, had a lot of, for him, it was, his brother. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, because I do have a lot of them. <laughs> My brother Tom, two okay. years older, with red okay. hair. He had a lot of struggle with just that, you know, with the isolation of it and the um, not agreeing with the policy about total, what was it called, shelter in place and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, so he talked a lot about that and. Um, so yeah, so that's his experience and. Um, so those are my interviews so far. I've also talked with other, like I have a neighbor who is great for because he used to commute from here in Santa Rosa to San Francisco every day. So when shelter in place happened, he was ecstatic because he was like at home and then um, just working from home and then like lunchtime just like going around and playing tennis with me sometimes and stuff, things like that, that, um, you know, no longer commuting. So for him, it was like great yeah so people are just it, to me it's fascinating because i mean there have been a lot of like butting heads about policy and people argue and especially if you know social media is awful and that was happening a lot on there yeah, right um but it's like and that's yeah for me it's really what is fascinating is what's underneath that headbutting like what are people's experiences you know some people feel like yay i don't have to commute and others are like they're locking me down and I can't stand it. Yeah. You know, so yeah. that's, um, so those are, yeah. We know of several people who have refu refused the vaccine. Right. One is Bob and Linda's son, Owen. Mm -hmm. And the other is my friend Kathy's youngest sister, 
who is a uh, conspiracy theorist mm -hmm. who she can't even talk to about any, any of this. And, and it's upsetting, very upsetting for her. So those are the two I know about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's others too, but the... Um... Yeah, it's to me, it's such a shame. That's the thing. I wanted to get beneath that in my own understanding. Like, it's such a shame that there's such acrimony um, that there just is. And I, uh, it's such a shame. I don't know what else to say. And it's, and I want to understand, like, I don't know. I just prefer to understand people and to, like, argue about shit. <laughs> I mean, for me personally, because I am, um, you know, I almost, I did get the, as you know, like I got the vaccine because we were flying in the airplane. Um, and also because we we're flying in an airplane and probably, I don't know, if I weren't doing that, I might not have gotten it to be honest. Cause I was the risks of like, this thing's new and it's only emergency authorized. Like I might not have done it. Um, I know, I but, know. We were so relieved to know that you'd gotten it. Right. Yeah, really. It makes it easier. The thing is, I still like, yeah, and that's the thing for me. Like, I would, if I were to go back in time, probably not do it. Um, but it also, you know, it gets complicated. It makes it way easier. Like, I would also, it's far easier to like, see you guys and not have to think about it it's far easier to see my new nephew you know and people for people to be comfortable so it becomes a whole like complex decision anyway and it's like you know i wouldn't want it if i didn't have it that would be a real pain i'd have to be like well leon i can't you know he'd be like well you can't see adam because you're not yeah all that stuff so yeah um anyway so it's I mean, in addition to the isolation, it's been try a trying time as far as, you know, and things like you, it's just like, a, you know, all across the board, things like you're being in the hospital and you can only see one person a day. To me, that's like, you know, that's a policy where I'm like, you can't, and there were people earlier on who like got sick and died from COVID who could not see any of their loved ones in person. And that I was just like, this is awful. This is very wrong. Um, yeah. You know, so, I mean, that's the beauty of like talking to real people for me is like, we're not just little like polarized points of view that are represented, you know, out like there. Like in the life experience, yeah. Right. Cause it is like, in your case, it's awful. You couldn't have like at least twice that many, like two people per day versus one, you know, it makes a big difference. Yeah. 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 So yeah. anyway. Yeah, I remember the, the day that Leon came to the hospital and I think Hank was there and Leon was told he couldn't visit me and he, you know, he broke down. Hmm. Right. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. I mean, that's the thing about like, I just really feel, you know, I'll never know their stories, but I feel for some of the early people with Corona who could not see family at all, like maybe they would have, because like, that for me is like a real value. It's like maybe their interaction and being able to be with other people would have actually helped them overcome it. Yeah. You know? And that's just, it was underestimated at the time. It was all about like treating the disease and the ventilators and shit. And, yeah. you know, it's complex, but I mean, there needs to be complexity in the response to it. And there has Well, it. when you think about the healthcare workers, that just cracks me up. Mm. How many of them have died? after, you know, serving on this horrible line. Right. Oh, just awful. It's awful. And some of them, there was a, you know, a couple of stories, some of them committed suicide. There was, you know- Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, I heard, 
and maybe that's a really outlier kind of thing, but like, just that they were probably so overwhelmed and so freaked out and like whatever took them down, you know? Mm -hmm. um, God, I don't know. And, you know, there's a couple of people I know who, my sister's, yeah, my sister's friend committed suicide and one of her best friends from childhood. And I don't know why, that was like last June or something, June 2020. Oh, so sorry, yeah. yeah. Mm. Just, um, mm. so, yeah, mm -hmm. those things. I guess like, anyway, so I like, I've wondered, my curiosity is like, how do you, how does humanity like come back from something like this now? When there's people- well, it's really complicated there too, because will there be coming back? Right. It's not clear. Right. Yeah. And when you think worldwide, mm. wow. Yeah, and I, I don't know. I worry about the kids. Like, how do they come back? Like, how do you? And kids in general, children in general, like how does, how do they heal from the trauma of like the isolation and that stuff? Because, you know, some of them, um, I have a neighbor who I like barely saw this. He was like five and then six or whatever. And I like almost literally, I don't think they came out of their house more than like. The Chinese family. Yeah. yeah. Well, I don't know how many times they came out of their house, but I saw them like out of their, I saw them out of their house like two or three times that whole year. Mm. And like, how does it, that's such a formative experience and how does, how do children heal from that depth of isolation? Well, you know something, I, I hate to say this, but if you look around the world at children's lives and some of the lives that children have led, yeah, for sure. war zones or this or that or the other, they have lived through incredible things right and sometimes have done well and mm -hmm. sometimes not but people have really lived through a lot yeah oh i know and yes yeah i agree and i don't know as like like because there's a point for me like during this was like this sucks and i hate being shut down and can't take the kids to the park and i was mad and i was mad and i was mad and i was mad and then like there came a point where it's like you know, exactly what you're saying just within exactly what you're saying like there were kids who lived through the concentration camps there were kids who were like um what's it called interned there were japanese kids who were interned during world war ii for no you know it's, and they lived through that shit and it's you know comparatively whatever mm -hmm. i don't know if it's worth saying this but still i'll say it like some of that is far worse than this Oh, yeah. And the internment even had many beneficial aspects, believe it or not. Oh, really? Like what? I'd never heard of it. Oh, that. my God. A lot of the internees were taught by famous artists. Oh. Also interned. Right. So let's say Ruth Asawa. Right. That's who I thought of. Sure. Yeah. yeah. She, she was there and she got she did art classes while she was there. So, um, I mean, they did many things to organize and, and make it a better experience. Because, mm. you know, these are very inventive people. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it's amazing. It is. Mm -hmm. It's funny. It's like, that's a similarity, actually, between like, Ruth Azawa taking classes and like Amos and me taking a class with you. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, let's see, what was I going to say about this? Um, hmm, what? Maybe I can't remember. Let's see. Um, not sure I can remember what I was going to say. Hmm. Sorry, I lost it. 
I lost it. I lost it. Oh, yeah. I was going to say something. There were some um, effects from the internment hmm. that were not so great. And like, for example, Kathy has a, a good college friend who went through the internment or her family did. And she said an effect that it had was they did not want to talk about their experiences. Hmm. It kind of shut the family down. And I think that's really sad. That's, yeah. I mean, and that actually happens with a lot of things. Like, you know, you hear about a lot of concentration camp survivors whose families never talk to them about their experiences. Right. Oh, until okay. they were 95 or something like that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Just want to say goodbye. No, don't want to, don't want to talk about it. Yeah, shut the door on it. I mean, Mm -hmm. which is a natural probably kind of a natural response to have but to me like obviously it's not a healthy response long term I mean yeah. maybe for a little while but long term like how can you heal from something if you're just like stuffing these memories away mm -hmm. um which actually so I think about like totally different topic then but like with you for you with your dad like he went through world war one yeah and didn't talk about that right i mean much at all or did he later well um late in his life if i would ask questions he was willing to talk oh, okay but he wasn't one of those guys that just likes to tell his experiences right you know, some families are more like that Hmm. And right. we'll, we'll put it this way. Hank's family is a lot more open to sharing family experiences right. than my family ever was. So certain things that were part of my family were not known to me until my dad was close to the end of his years. Hmm. My mom's family was more open and we knew those people my dad's family, we didn't really know the people hmm. and they weren't a together family, um, but mom's was. And so we heard a lot of family stories from her. Hmm. Yeah, good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah. I don't know how your family is in that respect. <laughs> um, I, <laughs> not that great. I mean, I feel like I'm okay with it. My family, which is me and Naomi and Amos and Solly, is okay, pretty good with that. But my, um, my dad's like, I didn't find out till four, yeah, four months before he died, I found out. I knew he had a half sister. I didn't know he had like lived with her for years when he was born <laughs> and that's pretty major I mean and same with my mom like she had um her biological father took off when she was I don't know how old I'm gonna guess and say four or something I don't really know that that's true um but he took off and he had a whole other family so she had all these half sisters I met them uh at my dad's funeral um so that gives you an idea of like how well yeah oh well these um yeah you know it's kind of these secrets and stuff which i i really do think are so damaging to you know so many people have that yeah in their history yeah. adoptions and you know displacements and this and this and this right yeah and actually a lot because of the war right yeah. um like Henry's family often had people living with them who were not relatives. Oh, you know, the living room was filled up with this person and that person because they needed a place to stay. Hmm. So like yeah. when he was young, it was that way? Yeah, yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. Oh, so that would be like, because he was born in 38. So 
Oh, mm -hmm. okay. Were the people that had come from Germany after? Is it that? Those um, I, I can't tell you who these people were exactly. I, I just don't know the details on that. Yeah. But some of them, you know, became like permanent family members in a sense. Yeah. yeah. Mm hmm Wow. I mean, that's just close. Like, it gives me, just to go through the pandemic, like it gives me new respect for people like who live, like the concentration camps, because that's a whole, the pandemic is awful, I think in some, some ways, but for concentration camps, those are people deliberately doing stuff to other people, mm -hmm. which to me is so much far more traumatic. Mm -hmm. um, it's just, oh. Uh, Oh, you know, I read about a movie that somebody whose name I can't remember has just made, which follows this, it's about a card shark or a card counter or whoever those guys are who travels all over the place. He was someone who tortured people at Abu Ghraib. Oh, uh, wow. Ooh. And he's just trying to avoid that whole memory hmm. so i thought that was a really interesting thing on which to base a movie yeah yeah he's the same guy that did taxi driver oh okay right yeah yeah paul schreider paul Schre schreider hank says yeah, it, it was a, in a review in the new yorker good last page yeah that's what yeah yeah, sounded really interesting, but also very painful. I don't know. Uh, anyhow, yeah. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. Oh my God, that would be quite a thing. I mean, I don't know how people live with themselves after doing stuff like that. Mm -mm. Just, hmm. Torture, torture has always been unbearable for me to think about hmm. torture. Oh. Yeah. Ever since I heard about torture, basically was during the oh god, you know the war in North Africa. Oh, okay. Which? Between oh. the French and, you know, it was the War of Liberation for the uh, non-French and the French. And Libya? No, no. Not the no. Libyan thing? No, and I just can't remember now. Hmm. <laughs> Everyone would know this, but... I don't, apparently. <laughs> I read novels about this when I was a teenager and I would just, you know, hear, reading about the grueling things that people went through, like genital, um, um, shocking, right. oh. you know, that kind of crap. Yeah. Oh, it just gripped me, mm. still does. Yeah. Mm. So when was that? So that would be. Well, it would have been. Uh, let's see. Uh, I was a teenager. What What could I say? Oh, and this was Camus, who wrote oh, this okay. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And so it would have been. I and I can't tell you the dates, but um, whatever. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It's, hmm. It's, I don't know. Like I, this is a random question, kind of. But like, is it a, is it a good idea for teenagers to read stuff like that? Sometimes I wonder, just based on like in high school, we were reading, you know, the Greek tragedies, and then we read like um, All Quiet on the Western Front, which is about World War One, written by a German guy, right? Um, Eric Maria, Eric Maria, okay. yeah, mm -hmm. um, and it was intense, and I became, I was like, 
became a pacifist on the spot because I was like, this is so horrible. Why would you ever engage? I think it's fine for teenagers to read these things. Yeah. But it's also, it was traumatizing too to be like, holy crap. Of course crap. it is. Of course it is. But think of the other part of the world that they're exposed to all the social media bullshit. Right. Which I think is very, very suspect. Right. Oh, you mean like North Korea or China where they're, where it's censored kind of thing? No, I just mean the, the horrible ads that people are getting all the time and opinions from their friends and this and that. Mm. That's what I feel people should be shielded from actually. Oh, I, I get it. Yeah, I hear you. Right. Right. Yeah, I mean, because at some point you got to find out about things like the Holocaust and the awfulness of like World Wars One and Two and yeah, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> People should know that in a certain context, but to have all this so social media uh, attacking and oh, defending yeah. and, you know, all the stuff they do, which I don't pay any attention to, but I know that it exists. Right. And I also know it drives people to suicide. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, no, I think that's a terrible thing. Yeah. Terrible. Yeah. Yeah. I'm glad I don't have a teenager with a cell phone and have to deal with that. I don't yet either. <laughs> I know, but it's coming up. It's coming it's up. It's coming up, but he doesn't have a cell phone yet. And I know. This is well, probably. Oh, yeah. At some point, it'll be necessary. But mm -hmm. this is a huge reason because um, social media is awful. And then also, there's just the waste of time factor. And like, yeah, the there's, screen there's, all the also, time. there's also the factor of what kind of brain changes are being done here to the people using it. Yeah. I do firmly believe that, that that's happening. Oh, for sure. I mean, things are designed to be, what have I heard? Like, I don't know the real science, but they're designed to um, kind of trigger a dopamine pleasure center. And so you like keep doing shit and keep doing shit. And um, this is, no, those things are not, and that does, I mean, everything affects brain development. It's like what you do with your brain affects it. And I, I mean, I totally agree, which is why T does not have a cell phone yet. And I don't know, we joke, Naomi and I sometimes like, oh, Amos, we'll let you have a cell phone when you're 30. <laughs> well, of course, it's, <laughs> that's not going to be a workable solution. Has he been asking for one? No, he's not kind of. Solly hmm. well, has started. He's also, but... Amos is kind of an anti-technology guy, I think. Yeah, well, he uses it. I mean, he creates um, stop, stop motion films, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You let him watch, and he, so he's not anti. It's like, like, seems kind of like bounded in some good ways. We also let him watch like a couple um, movies a day, like small movies, you know, 40 minutes or something, 40, 50 minutes a day. And, you know, he watches anime and stuff like that. And so asking for a cell phone. He's saying how he wants a cell phone and then he's going to have um, <laughs> games and stuff like that. And it's like, eh, that's not going to happen, so mm. And we're doing better with him, actually. What? About a waste of time. Yeah. Games on the computer, on the cell phone. Yeah. Oh, I know all about it. I mean, I can't tell you how many hours I wasted on. You know, I had a, this was before the internet was really a thing, but I, we in college, like playing games on the freaking computer. And, uh, oh. Yeah. Yeah. It's such a waste. Yeah. Never was part of my life. Never. Right. No. Yeah. I would rather read a book any day. Right. Uh, I still like, it's good for some things like it's, you know. Technology is a whole thing. It's good for things like this. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I, I wouldn't be probably, you know, I wouldn't be like driving down to interview or interview you right now so we can do this. But it's like the difference is using technology versus getting used by it. Yeah. Is it a chuckle? What? 
It's a tool. It's a tool, right? <laughs> tool, not a master, hopefully, you know. And you know, part of my life, I, it has been a master of me at times where it's like. Yeah, you you've been through that, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. think I'm kind of out the other side, more or less, but um, yeah. yeah. Good. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Here's a random question. What's your, um, what are some of your faint, or do you like them all? What are some of your favorite paintings you ever did? Oh, I ever did? Yeah, did there any like stand out? Sure. Um, I, I'm very attached to the big um, what's that painting I did, Hank? I don't know. Oh, yes, you do. The goddess up in the hall. Yeah, well, I'm kind of tired of that now. Hmm. But it has a, a favorite. No, but I'm I'm thinking of the um, Gaia painting. Oh, it's running, yeah. This is more recent. Right. And then there are some of the unstretched canvas paintings that I love very much. Mm. And, but I'd have to think about which ones. Right. I couldn't tell you right away. Mm. Yeah. But those are some recent ones, I yeah. would say. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this one here. I don't know if I'm going to show you this. Do you know this one that's in the bedroom? I mean, of course you know it, but do you know that it's here? I'll find out. Wait, I need my monitor for work. I'm not there. Look at those black things, show. What the heck is that? Oh, that's just my belt on the thing. This one right here. The blessing, the Tom of Blessing. Do you see it? Yeah, yeah, I can see it. I can yeah. see it. Yeah. Um, that one's cool. Uh, well, I have a tendency to like the big paintings. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's a small painting and it's right. fun. It's yeah. great. I'm happy that you have it. Yeah. yeah. It's cool. Yeah. The, so you got the um, you didn't start the stretcher yet for this one, for the one you're planning to do. No. I have all the equipment. Well, actually, what I did cut the corners. Oh. Yeah, I did. Let's we'll start. Hmm. I was a lot stronger before I went to the hospital. Right, right. The first time. Mm -hmm. Oh, you mean in 2009? No, I mean more recently, the one during the pandemic. Oh. I was a lot stronger then. Are you talking like in January or so? No, no. No, I'm talking about when I had to go in for the biopsy. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Which I don't remember exactly when that was. Mm. Yeah. Three weeks ago. Right. Three weeks ago. You know, and I've had also, well, I've had some problems feeling like I was losing my cognition. Right. That feels really bad. And especially yeah. when other people are seeing it and saying, oh, yeah, you're in the early stages of Alzheimer's. Right. Well, that feels horrible. Of course. <laughs> the, the, <laughs> the meeting we had with the oncologist on Tuesday, you know, it was a lot of very complicated information. And at a certain point, maybe one or two points, I had to say, you are making me feel like a mentally ill person. Right. Stop it. So I just have to say that when it's true. Right. 
you know, why do you want to make people feel that way? It's very bad. Mm. Yeah, some doctors do not have any clue. <laughs> I just think like bedside manner or whatever, they don't really get it. Well, the thing is, Leon was at the meeting, which was great, mm. very beneficial. And he understood most of it more than the rest of us. And all I can say is, I just have to thank him for all the time he has put into following this whole thing. Right. Really, really appreciate him, especially when he has this newborn child, you know, God. Mm -hmm. So um, I don't know where this was going, but I guess I went there, whatever it was. <laughs> right. That's it. That's it. Yeah, that's oh. hard. Um, yeah. you feel is your cognition any better now? It seems like it to me, like, but I don't know. My cognition? Yeah. Well, I'm not going into those weird things in the evening. Right. Happening. And actually, Leon made the observation that I don't seem to do that when I am engaged. Right. In other words, I'm talking to people and I'm active. Right. It used to happen when I get to drift off by myself. And mm. has that been happening much lately, honey? Happened yesterday. What? You know, everybody uh, left about three o'clock here because we're tired. I left where? You know, you, you went into. <laughs> no, I don't. I'm asking you. Yeah, I'm telling you, it happened, it started happening at three o'clock uh, yesterday, and you, you, know, <sighs> okay. you had a chill, I had to put the bathroom on. Mm. Well, I'm sure I did have a chill. <laughs> when, 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 when Ina came here, you came out of it. Yeah, I was engaged. Right. Mm. One of the caretakers that comes is from the Ukraine. She's very lively. She does all kinds of things. <laughs> yeah. So she helps in that way. Mm. Mm -hmm. It's a lot. Yeah. I don't know how. Uh. I don't know what I was going to say. It's hard, like with medical, I don't know, just with doctors saying stuff. And that's a whole thing, like treating. And not all of them doctors are like this or anything, but some of them talk as if the person is just a case history or something. And if you're sitting right there, it's like, what the hell? <laughs> yeah, it's not easy. But it's like, you know, I don't know. I also thought like you, I don't know. I'm not a neurologist, anything, but like, I just was aware, like you hadn't really slept for weeks and weeks and then months. There was a certain time there, right? Well, that was earlier. Yeah. And it certainly improved. Right. Um, big time. And that made a huge difference. And that had to do with the medication that took the water away. Right. Yeah. 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 So that was excellent, excellent, yeah. Is there any, this is just a curiosity I have, is there any like sort of, um, like is there any spiritual aspect of this, of like what you're going through for you? Like, I don't know, I'm just curious, maybe there's not. No. I'm really far apart from that. And I used to, that used to be much more a part of my life. Mm -hmm. Not so much now. Yeah. Yeah, makes sense. Oh, you know, it's funny though. 
this man has come to clean our house. And at the end, I'm sorry, but I think he's a little boastful that at the end of his stint, he said, well, he had asked me whether I was, uh, whether I believed in God. And I said, yes, I do believe in God. And, and then at the end, he said, can I pray for you? Hmm. And I said, sure. And it was quite a prayer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so you had to listen to it too. Oh, of course. Yeah. <laughs> I thought he just maybe meant in a silent way in the future. No, it was not in a silent way. <laughs> yeah. See, I have the shakes right now. Right, I see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think it's the climate. Hank, is the heater on? Please. Okay, close the door and put the heater on. It's yeah. It's warm in here. Not for me, it ain't. Oh, you guys have, I can see you have the, uh, the door going to the studios open now. It's cool. Yeah. Yeah. That was the weirdest thing. Right. To all of a sudden have that be open for the right. first time since we ever moved into this place. Yeah. That's like 1983 or whenever it was. Whatever it was. Yeah. Yeah. That's how we made it. We made it so that, you know, we could use it as a dwelling. Right or this or whatever yeah mm -hmm. so we were very smart and we made a very nice place this place down here is excellent you oh, know it's great. well made well designed you know judy lived here for what 13 years or so and uh what i don't know Hank. you could look it up and then you could tell me but i can't tell you the date However, she was a real boon the whole time, actually. The fact that she would go for long periods of time. Right. And then, you know, that you guys could come. And... Yeah, that was great. I have this thing where I have to spit all the time. I don't, nobody has been able to help me with that. I didn't <laughs> <And> think. <laughs> Part of me was like, maybe, no, I didn't really think this, but I was like, wonder if you started <laughs> chewing tobacco or something. <laughs> not really. Well, who would help? Right, but yeah, I'm, maybe. I'm not going to do it. Right. Well, I haven't chewed it. I haven't chewed it. I don't know where it is now. It's, it's hiding. Oh, give me one. Give me a piece of gum. Oh. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Funny that I keep hearing this noise and it sounds like there's a, an appliance on, but I don't know, maybe it's the heater. I don't know. Like it a... sounds like the washing machine is on, but it isn't, so. Oh, it could just be, it's, um, might just be related to whatever hearing loss you have. Because that's, um, sometimes that's how that happens. So I have told you about my hearing loss. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I'm not sure what to do about that, but just live with it and find out how it goes. Mm -hmm. I didn't think that that might be related. Yeah, well, what I, I mean, I have a, not, I have a mild tinnitus, 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 whatever. And um, what I learned about it, part of it is like the brain fills in what's missing. Mm -hmm. So like, you know, the frequency's missing that, I'm not gonna explain this well, but it's basically that it kind of, usually your brain filters out, like um, your brain makes its own sound, actually, not your brain, but like, Somehow the, I should not even try to explain this. The point is it kind of, <laughs> the brain kind of, it doesn't filter out some stuff that it us usually filters out when the hearing's lost, mm -hmm. when certain frequencies are lost because mm -hmm. it's trying to, um, you know. I, I had my hearing assessed at Costco. Yeah. And, you know, it's shown to have a certain amount of hearing loss. 
And then he put some devices on that were to give the illusion of, um, you know, small hearing aids. Mm. I really did not like them because it put a whole lot of weird sound in it. Uh, yeah. Which I, I did not want these right. sounds. Thank you. Sir. Here's my gum. Yay. Want more back? Yeah, I do. But the physical therapist will be here fairly soon, so. Yeah. Fine. We can just wait if it's time to wait. I think, but I will, I think I'll go, I do have to eat lunch, so I, I think I'll go. Sure, Joe, I, I, I'm getting a little tired. Yeah, I was going to check you. in with you. Okay. <laughs> but this, is, this has been great. I really appreciate you taking the time and the interest in doing yeah. it. Oh, sure. Great. Yeah, and I think people will be really interested. Um, you know, uh, people keep mentioning it. you have a, a blog, but I have not. Here you are. Gone to your blog. Yeah. Want another one? Not right now, honey. Thank okay. you. Thanks. Ah. Yeah, if you don't, I mean, do you mind me publishing this? Like putting it for the world to see or whatever? Okay. Nope. Cool. I'll yeah. do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Here we are. <laughs> Um, okay. Well, Joe, great to have this time together. Yes, same here. It's been great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay.